Hello, everybody. So hope with the little break that, that you guys have from 15 minutes, so we can resume back with the two next session or slots with uh, Associate Prof. Dr. Azmi Muhammad Tamil. Should we continue with the two prof? All right. Okay, without further ado, I would like to present the um, uh, speaker for today to, to introduce. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. I'm going to share my screen again. Why do I have to share the screen? If I don't share my screen, the resolution will be very poor. So that's why we have to share the screen. Okay. So hopefully, I'm, I hope you're seeing me and my slides. Okay. So let's talk about basic hypothesis testing. Okay. This uh, basic hypothesis testing was introduced by Jesse Nyman and Egon Pearson way back in 1928. Uh, why they are uh, worried about this? They are, because at that time, whenever people want to prove something, they have to come up with their own uh, experiment to prove or disprove their respective theory. So Jesse Nyman and Egon Pearson came up with this concept so that it is sort of standardized for every kind of things that you want to do. Okay? Every time, every kind of experiment that you want to do, you can do the, use this to come up with a, a test to, to prove or disprove something. Uh, basically, they want, they're interested in the point. What does it mean to have a non-significant result in a significant test? Can you conclude that a hypothesis is true if you have failed to refute it? Okay. In many situations, the hypothesis tests are used against a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis, that is the straw man. For example, you have two drugs that have been compared in a clinical trial. Okay. The null hypothesis to be tested is that the two drugs produce the same effect. Okay. Why we say the two drugs produce the same effect? When you say the null hypothesis, it is stated as the, there is no difference of effectiveness between the drug A and drug B. So basically, you are, you are testing that the two drugs produce the same, same effect. In real life, if you are trying to prove that the two drugs produce the same effect, of course, you're not going to do the, the testing. Of course, you're not going to do the clinical trial. So the hypothesis that the two treatments that are the same is the straw man, which is meant to be knocked down by the results of your study. Okay, that is the null hypothesis. Okay, let's take an example of a drug to prevent. Okay, this one we already covered earlier. So I'm just going to skip this part. Okay, uh, drug versus placebo. If you think the drug is really effective. The rate of recurrence of cancer is lower among the treatment group compared to the placebo group. Okay, we recovered this earlier when we are showing for, for the sample size. Okay, so I'm just going to skip. So basically, we have large enough sample size. We have proven that uh, treatment is better than the placebo. Treatment is better than placebo. Okay, so now we're going to uh, go one step higher. Okay. We're going to do one step higher. We're going to we're going to uh, compare drug A versus drug B. Okay, we're going to compare drug, uh, drug A versus drug B. Okay, so uh, there's apparently nothing I can do about my the quality of my picture. Either I get the green screen, I don't get the green screen. I mind that is not about that. That's not important now. What is important is the PowerPoint slide. Okay. Okay. When you conduct a study, you want to make an inference from the data collected. For example, drug A is better than drug B in treating the disease D. Okay. Drug A is better than drug B in treating the disease D.
for drug A to be better than drug B, then drug A should has a higher cure rate than the drug B. Okay, if your category is cured or not cured. If it is for controlling the blood pressure, for example, okay, then the mean BP drop for drug A should be larger than drug B. The mean BP drop for drug A should be larger than drug B. If drug A is better than drug B. So, as mentioned just now, yes, the hypothesis, you want to show drug A is better than drug B. But what you are beating, what you are trying to bring down, is not the hypothesis. You are trying to bring down the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is, there is no difference of effectiveness between drug A and drug B in treating the disease. There is no difference in of effectiveness between drug A and drug B in treating the disease. So you have the alternative hypothesis, which is there is a difference of effectiveness. Null hypothesis is assumed true unless the data indicate otherwise. Okay, so your experiment is trying to reject the null hypothesis, the straw man. Okay, you are trying to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, but you cannot prove. Uh, so basically, you you can reject, but you cannot prove a hypothesis. So, for example, all swans are white. For you to say that all swans are white, you have to capture all the swans. Then you prove that all the swans are white. However, however, okay, uh, that's a okay. Never mind. I thought I saw messages there. Okay. Okay. So. However, you say if you say one, uh, not, not all swans are white. Not all swans are white. Then you want the the, the minute you have the first black swan, it is suffice to reject the null hypothesis. If you say not all swans are white, then one black swan is suffice to reject the hypothesis. Okay, so that is the concept behind the null hypothesis. So let's say it's a small, simple example. Okay, you believe that the reindeer can fly. Why I came up with this reindeer thingy? Usually, when I give this lecture, it is in December. <laughs> So uh, you keep hearing the song Rudolf the Red no, Reindeer. Okay. So what is the null hypothesis? A reindeer cannot fly. So you have to do an experiment. So your design is to take all the reindeer in the leaf, take it to the eleventh floor, and then you have push it from the roof into the open area beside the emergency department okay so when you have when you push all the reindeer unfortunately all the reindeer goes flat on the ground since this is being an animal study we only allowed six reindeer <laughs> cannot more than six okay so we push the six reindeer uh, off the roof and Unfortunately, they all go split on the ground. Therefore, the null hypothesis is not injected. This does not prove that the reindeer cannot fly. What you have shown is that from this roof, on this day, under these dreary weather conditions, this particular reindeer either could not or chose not to fly. Okay? So, it is possible in principle to reject the null hypothesis by exhibiting a flying reindeer. Okay. Not the kite, eh? not a flying kite, eh? a reindeer. So when you do a statistical test, you are interested in certain things. Among the terms that you're interested in is the term significance. Okay. Inferential statistics determine whether a significant difference of effectiveness exists between drug A and drug B. 
if there is a significant difference, then the p-value will be less than 0 0.05. Okay, therefore, the null hypothesis saying that there is no difference will be rejected. Otherwise, if there is no significant difference where the p-value is larger than 0 0.05, then the null hypothesis would not be rejected. Okay, the usual level of significance utilized to reject or not reject the null hypothesis are set at either 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. In the above examples that we stated earlier, they are all set at 0 0.05. Why 0 0.05? If, if the level of significance is 0 0.05, therefore, the confidence level is 1 minus 0 0.05. Therefore, the confidence interval is 95%. Okay? You are 95% sure that the difference that you detect is due to real difference, not due to chance. I repeat, you are 95% sure that the difference that you detect are due to real difference, not due to chance. Okay. They ask for different example of that of this. Uh, usually, it is just, just a play of the language. Eh? It is just a play of the language. Basically, you're just saying that there is no difference of effectiveness between uh, type A and type B of intervention, whatever. Okay? All right. <laughs> if your CI is 99%, which means that your level of significance is set at 0 0.01 at 0 0.01. So as stated earlier, why we set at 0 0.05, you are 95% sure that the difference that you detect is due to real difference, not due to chance. Okay. So why uh, it is due to chance? 5%. So 5%. So the 5% come on there. It is at both ends, to the left side and to the right side of the normal curve. So to the left side, the, the cutoff point is 1.96, negative. To the right side is positive 1.96. Okay. Remember that number. Remember that number. Because that 1.96 will come up again and again. It already come up in the sample size. It's going to come up in the chi-square. It's going to come up in the t-test, the 1.96. Oops. Uh, I cannot quote this line. Ugh. Why 0 0.05? R. A. Fisher. Uh, R. A. Fisher. Reginald. I can't remember the A said what. Sorry. I'm old already. Demented already. R.A. Fisher did refer to the probability to declare significance as p-value. The word p stands for the word probability value. He stated inside his papers, it is a common practice to judge a result significant if it is of such magnitude that it will be produced by chance not more frequently than once in 24 hours. That was what he wrote in his books, in his papers. One in 24. So 1 in 20 is 0 0.05. Therefore, if p-value is less than 0 0.05, then the probability of defect detected will due to chance is less than 5%. There will be 95% confident that defect detected is due to real effect, not due to chance. Okay. So what does it mean if you take the p-value of 0 0.001? Okay. 0 0.001 if you will shift the decimal point, then you will see that the probability of the effect detected were due to chance is less than one per 1,000 trials. Why 1,000? I got bigger three decimal points here. Eh? One, two, three. Okay. Although you have determined the level of significance and confidence interval, there is still a chance of error. 
the error are type 1 and type 2 error. Okay. okay, so let's talk about the type 1 and type 2 error. I'm still not too happy because suddenly I look very dark. Macam ghost. I have a ghostly appearance. Mm -hmm. Ooh, never mind. Okay. Makin lama makin hilang. Macam cerita Kiki the delivery. Which? Uh, Kiki the... Uh, the Michael Lama makin hilang. Alright. So type 1 type 2 error. Let's talk about type 1 type 2 error. Okay. If uh, you conclude that the treatments are not different and the treatments are not really any different, then okay, no problem. Correct decision. If you conclude the treatments do have... The problem arises when you conclude that it is not different, but in reality, it is really different. That is what we call type 2 error. So type 2 error is also known as beta error. So beta error tends to happen because of your sample size too small. So I repeat, type 2 error tends to occur when your sample size is too small. Or the treatment are not really different. But when you run the analysis, when you run the analysis, you find out that You conclude that the treatments are different. Although in reality, they are not really different. So this one is called as type 1 error or alpha error. Why they call it alpha error? Because usually it is, you are selecting the wrong alpha cutoff point. Because you are selecting the wrong alpha cutoff point. So, what happened? So when you are taking the wrong alpha cutoff point, uh, therefore, you are deciding wrongly. So you have to create a, a correct alpha cutoff point. So uh, this one usually happens when you have multiple comparison. You have multiple comparison, and you turn out you've been selecting the wrong cutoff point. Uh, basically, we always we always take zero point zero five, but sometimes you need to do a correction, and the correction says that the value is not really zero point zero five. It's supposed to be smaller. It's supposed to be smaller. So this one is where you're supposed to get the smaller value. All right. Okay. Okay, so here is the example given. You are comparing between two treatments, A and B, with a 5% significant level. Then the level of true negative this test is 0 0.95. But when we perform a a versus B, then A versus C. You got because you got three treatment group. Okay, the probability that neither test will give a significant result when there is no real difference is zero point nine five times zero point nine five, end up with zero point nine, which means the type one error has increased up to ten percent. So what you should do, the five percent level of cut point, you have to reduce. You divide by three. So instead of 0 0.05, it is it becomes 0 0.017. Okay. But it is like this when we are calculating manually. Nowadays, when you're using software, the software will do the correction automatically. The software will do the correction automatically. This one used to happen the last time when we we're doing this calculation by hand. Okay, type two error will be stated. We are not rejecting the null hypothesis, although the null hypothesis is wrong. The null hypothesis, null hypothesis say there is no difference, but in reality it is really different. Okay. So the null hypothesis is not rejected. And this always occur when the sample size is too small. This always occur when the sample size is too small. Here's an example of type 2 error. Okay, this, uh, this study from Jabatan Anesthesiology. This study came from Jabatan Anesthesiology. They had only 15 per arm. 
15 on petidine, the other 15 on cocktail. Uh, so now, the difference is double. Eh? Difference is double. Uh, petidine, 53%, no pain. Cocktail, 26.7%, no pain. But although it is different, the p value was not significant. It is only 0 0.0. Sorry, p value is 0 0.136. As though there is no significant difference uh, between uh, petidine and cocktail. Okay. There is a large difference, but not significant. So it is type 2 error. So, how do you prove that this is the type 2 error? When we increase the sample size, uh, when we check with the PS2, PS2 we can check the power. So it or not, the power is too small, only 32%. As mentioned earlier, power of any study should be at least 18%. Okay. And uh, by increasing the sample to become uh, double or triple, you will see that the p value will become significant. Okay. So how do you do the hypothesis testing procedure? It depends on your data. It could be if data is normally distributed, you can do parametric tests. You're doing Z test, T test, and one way ANOVA. Non-parametric could be able to concern rank sum test or true slow test. <laughs> okay, we already stated here, these are all the different statistical tests that you can do for hypothesis testing. If your data is normally distributed, you can do student t-test, ANOVA, PET t-test, Pearson condition, and linear regression. If your data is not normal, we can do the non-parametric test, which is Fisher, will cause rank sum, Pruskowalis, will cause sign rank, and Spearman or tender rank correlation. Okay. So these are the, uh, this will all be covered. Uh, either today or on Monday. So today and Monday, you all will die. If the data is qualitative nature, you have the chi-square test, proportionate test, yes correction of Fisher's exact test. Okay. So if the, the numbers are large enough, you can do chi-square. If the numbers are small, you have to do yes or Fisher's exact test. You have to do yes or Fisher's exact test. All right. Okay, I think we are on the last slide already. The home message. Uh, we give you a table. So hopefully you can use the table to decide on the appropriate statistical test. Okay. So if you do not know what is qualitative dichotomous or qualitative polynomial, allow me to elaborate. Qualitative dichotomous, they have two outcomes, male or female date or alive, polynomial, more than two outcome, like Malay, Chinese, Indian, and others. So that's quality. The rest are quite clear. Eh? All right. With that, three down, one to go. Okay, back to our chairperson. Yes, bro. So very informative, and I hope all the participants take note about that. And obviously, um, like, Prof, as me saying any questions, then probably you can set like the right person in the future to ask the question by email. All right. Um, we should proceed immediately, Prof. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, sure. Because I think the audience also <laughs> would like to like eagerly to have their lunch. Party prayers. Yes, party <laughs> prayers and everything. Okay. Okay. So we continue on, Prof, and audiences. <laughs> 